all your lessons in chess will be from chess.com. Okay, I will make it now. <laughs> okay, so go to the website. You can go to Google and then just search chess.com and then you'll get some green pawn logo. You have to click on that. That's chess.com. Okay, and then you have to go to sign up or sign in. And then add whatever. And then there will be very different, different things over there, which I will explain you. Can you see my screen? It's on Google. Yes. Okay, so have you signed in? Yes, I am sign signing in. Do you see something like this? Hmm? Oh, fine, you want uh, leave it. Yes. Okay. So, right now I'm going to go to one feature on chess.com. It's on the three dots. Okay. And go to, you don't have to go away. I'm just telling you, since I have a premium membership, membership on this account, I'm allowed to use this thing. It's called Explorer. So, I can explain you all. Now, how would you say your skill in chess? Beginner, intermediate, amateur, or advanced? What would you say it as? Advanced. Advanced? advanced. Okay, fine. So I'm going to teach you. Do you know any opening? No. Okay, so I'll teach you what's an opening first. A opening is how you open up or start your game. Okay. Now, right now, the yeah, opening which I played with white and black was the king's gambit accepted. And there are multiple openings like the Dutch defense, French defense, Danish gambit, egg gambit, ICBM gambit, god gambit, egg, and more. You will get to know those openings when you later practice a lot. Okay, but right now I'm going to teach you the most basic opening and my first ever opening. So you start off with pawn e4, and then, for example, the, the, from the black side, black plays something like b6, okay? Then you take over the center with e4. So you take away, you're covering the center from these ways. And this is known as the Danish, okay? There's another variation of this called the Danish gambit, where you don't play this move and play it over here. You play it over here. Okay? But we're not going to learn the Danish gambit, but a little simple opening. Okay? Now, if black attacks your pawn like that, you defend with the knight, keeping it on g3. Okay? Now, this time, if your opponent attacks tries to attack, tries to build up an attack like that, you put your, your knight on c3, okay? Now, this is the main line of the Danish. Oh, yeah, and don't look over here, okay? It's just random variations closer to the Danish, so don't look over here. I will teach you about these things later. So right now, this is the very basic setup. Okay. Now, like I said, 
this move prepares an attack, okay, and then your opponent does that attack. Now, your knight is already defending your pawn, so he cannot attack you. So now you develop your bishop, your f bishop, to c4, okay? And then what okay. if um, mm, your opponent develops your bishop to b7, attacking this pawn, okay? So basically the knight won't be enough for both of these attackers. That means you develop your queen to e2, which saves this pawn from dying. You could say it like that. Now, if your opponent does random moves like queen c8, then you finish, finish your opening with bishop f4. Now you have a lot of you have a lot of central control over here. And the center basically means everything in the game. So it's better that you play the Danish in your first games on this website. Okay. Multiple people might know a way to counteract with the Danish. They might play a Sicilian Dutch defense, which will hurt your Danish opening. So for now, after this move, uh, black tries stri striking back with knight f6, you castle queen side, okay? And then you try building up your rooks. And then you'll have a dominant center and you can go for the middle game strat, okay? So that's the Danish gambit. I mean Danish. So that's one opening for you, okay? Okay. Now let me reset the board. That is one beginner opening. But since you're telling me you're advanced, I'll teach you the London system named by the city London. Point is to go bishop f4, pawn e3, and then knight f3. Okay? Now... Okay. Uh, what if black copies you? Well, then you go with the opening. Now, if black does meaningless moves, you'll have a position like this. And from here, the opening starts. Okay? Your opponent keeps, your, keeps his knight on f6. You keep your knight on f3. Okay? Now, there are multiple multiple variations of the London system, but my preferred one is the main line and the second preferred one is the Obama London, which you will learn later, but still, if uh, black develops trying to attack your pawn, you defend it with the main line, C3, okay? And denoting the thing which I'm saying is C3, um, E1, E2, those are coordinates and I, I don't say pawn c3 when I indicate the pawn because c3, you can say it like that. Now, point is you go d3 and then d and then d2. Okay? So, your opponent wants to develop the bishop. Okay, fine. You go with bishop f bishop d3. Then uh, the opponent develops his queen. Then you go knight d2 and this is the london system main line it's a little advanced variation point is that after you know something like this your opponent castles king side with a dominant defense but you get a queen out okay opponent tries to get side control your queen side castle and then you start your attack with knight oh wait no okay he's trying to attack your king you go with your attack on knight e5 okay and then after something like takes takes um 
after something like that you make his, his knight get trapped now what if he takes your bishop you take back keeping little more defense on this pawn and then you attack like this okay okay now just tell me if the arrows are a bit annoying and you won't understand but basically you use your pawns to destroy all of these all of these pe people who are defending the king after that you get your main pieces in and just destroy okay let's go back now let me teach you one trap many people call this the scholar's mate trap do you know this no okay many people call the scholar's mate trap but original originally it was founded on polish television it's called the wyward queen attack so after pawn e4 pawn e5 the queen goes to h5 trying to attack this pawn giving check on the king this is called the wyward queen attack so what if your opponent tries to attack your queen with pawn g6 then you take this pawn it's a fork of your queen of your king and your rook okay no matter what piece you block with i take the rook that's the trap now after pawn e4 pawn e5 queen h5 now what if black knows what you're trying to do and keeps his knight on c6 defending the pawn so we cannot take it okay then you take your bishop out and keep it on c4 we basically trying to scholars mate our opponent scholars mate is when you take a help of a piece to trap your king and also giving a check okay so basically you're threatening scholars mate so uh, what if black attacks your queen with knight f6 then you take the pawn and it's checkmate your king cannot move anywhere to the checkmate you cannot you cannot take the queen in any way okay okay now what if your opponent is smarter than you think he is and blocks your queen with pawn g6 this blocks the attack that you were hoping for so you slide your queen back to f3 the threat is still there of the scholar's mate now same thing okay uh, black develops its bishop okay doesn't matter because it's going to be mate now the best move for black is going to be to somehow defend the pawn okay or block the attack and it is knight f6 it's the best move for black according to the engine so basically again it blocks the attack and now what would i prefer is try to develop your bishop pinning the knight to the queen okay so for example uh, black does something some developing moves like that then you pin the knight to the queen okay okay now what if see there are two threats over here one is the scholar's mate and the other one is if your knight moves i can take your queen now it would be super hard for the opponent to think what you're going to do so first things first he will start off with counteracting the pin by sliding his bishop over to e7 okay it counteracts the pin but you have to do something about this so what do you do is take the knight okay after something like takes takes you bring in your other knight your g knight to h3 okay after something like i don't know hmm. after something like this then you attack 
Then you push your pawn forward, trying to go here, attacking the bishop. And the bishop cannot take back because it's defended by the knight. Okay? Now, okay. our meeting will end in 10 minutes. So we have to do something quickly. So what if your opponent tries to go knight b4? Doesn't matter. Tries to give a check. Mate. Tries to give a check. Then you simply castle. Okay. Now, if the knight, anyways, takes a free pawn, you move. Okay. You move the pawn one step forward, sacrificing the rook. Okay. Now, for example, something like this and this. Your pawn is just dominating in each square. Now, what if um, white tries to, you know, castle like this? You move your queen, king, right? Make sure your rook comes there. What if your knight? What if their knight goes to the same position? Make your rook. Oops, sorry. Yeah, make your rook go here. Okay, it attacks this pawn. Okay, and we can do something like this. Now there's one tricky move here after something like knight d4 attacking your queen. You sacrifice your rook. Okay, now there are two very very powerful things here. If white takes with the H pawn, you can deliver checkmate. Okay, so checkmate consists of this, um, this, 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 and then all the way over here. Okay, now black will have some ways to counteract this mate but all of those things I will teach you later now let's go on to the second part of the lesson the middle game now the middle game is the most hardest and you could say easiest way to crack your opponent by meaning that is making your opponent resign there are a lot of tactics which involve here, like an X, like an X rescue, book, and more. Now let me give you an example of an X ray. So, what if Black does something like this? Okay, you know, just doing meaningless, meaningless moves. Okay. Now you come to this point. You can trade off the queens, but you have a trap over here. Slide your queen back, and now your queen goes here. You sacrifice your bishop. Queen takes, and after something like... Uh... Nope, not that. After you castle, he does this. Now you develop your rooks. He attacks your knight. You develop attacking his queen. He goes here. Okay, you sacrifice your knight. Okay. And then after something like, uh, how do I say, it takes, he goes back. Okay, or wait, that might be done. After it takes, he takes back. You go here. No, wait. This is a super long sequence to get an X ray. You go here, queen goes back here, and now castles. After this, take. Now, this is a pin on the queen to the king, and this is called a rook. This is called a rook x-ray. The queen cannot move because it's going to be checkmate. And that's how you win a queen. And give a check. 
that's called an x ray now let me give you an example of a fork now take this position okay you do you you just do random moves okay and then knight c1 is a fork of the king and the rook that's something known as a fork okay when you basically attack two pieces and you can only save one of them the opponent can only save one of them now let me give you an example of a screwer okay you do something like this he takes okay you go here he goes front and now something like this now this is a screwer of the queen basically it's like giving checkmate to the king but you switch the roles of the bishop and the queen now black doesn't know what it's doing so it goes here and now you have this after something like this you're up a queen and that's something known as a screwer okay and those are all the tactics you should always look for in the middle game middle game means after the opening sequence okay Okay. Now there's something known as a checklist. It consists of checks, attacks, and captures. Now, attacks consist of tactics. Captures consist of checks, and checks consist of checkmates. What I mean by that is you should always look for a check, a capture, or an attack. Now, can you see attack? This is an attack and also a tactic. And this is a check. And both of these things are a capture. All of these things are good, so you have to do one of them. Okay? Now, the best would be this. Okay? Now, if I would give you one move, where would you go? Queen takes, right? So, yes. you have to find a way to achieve that move, okay? What I mean by is, check the checklist. Can you find an attack? Yes. Yes. How you can achieve the attack? You know, you don't achieve the attack. You already got the attack. That's the first step. You achieve the attack. Okay, now get that down. Okay, so something like this, this, and this, you get the attack. Now, let me try going way back. Now, this is the attack. Okay, that's the attack, but there are multiple attacks you can do. For example, something like this which then attacks the pawn okay but you have to find which attack is the best over here it's this okay so it's called a checklist and you should always look for them and that's all okay for our lesson okay i'm just going to recommend you that you should always play on this side because it's the number one best site and you should probably go up against the computer once in a while okay i've played these bots multiple times okay okay so wait just one second i've gone to these bots multiple times and chess.com basically you know every single month gets a new bot Okay, show casted over here. Right now, this is Magnus month. This is Magnus month. Chess.com created the bots of the number one best player in the world, Magnus Carlsen. Okay, and then there's something known as coach, where you will see different IMs and different grandmasters over here. 
and basically these people have contributed something to the chess.com community now after that you go to adaptive basically these things depending on the tide of the match will make things easier for you or harder for you 